book of Lamentations, chapter number 3, and give you a thought the Lord's laid on my heart, and I hope it'll be a blessing to you. Appreciate you being here this morning. What a blessing it is to have you here with us. If you're a visitor and if you're a member, we appreciate you too. Amen? Amen. In the book of Lamentations, chapter number 3, I hear some of you still turning your pages, so I'll uh, give you just a second, a few seconds. Uh, The book of Lamentations simply comes from the word lament, which means to mourn or to cry. And Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. Picture maybe chapter 9. Jeremiah said, Oh, that I, my head uh, were a fountain of tears, that I may weep for the, the slain of the daughter of my people, and that I might go out in the wilderness and, and lodge there away from my people. And he was a weeping prophet and broken. And uh, I'll show you what he said here in Lamentations chapter 3. Let's start reading about verse number 18. He said, And I said, My strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Seemed like his hope was gone. Sometimes you feel that way, don't you? And he said, uh, Remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. And he said, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions. Notice it said compassions, plural, more than one, fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. Right there in verse number 23. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. I want to preach about that a few minutes this morning. That last few words in that verse Number 23, where he said, Great is thy faithfulness. We hear that word a lot and say it a lot and sing about it. Matter of fact, there's a hymn written with that title. And uh, sometimes we don't really realize what that means, but being faithful is a wonderful thing. I think one of the greatest compliments somebody can pay you is when they say that you're faithful. Amen? Amen. They say, Boy, he sure is faithful to what he believes. or He's faithful to his church. He's faithful to his job. He's been faithful to his wife. Or she's been faithful to her husband. That's a great attribute. And God is faithful this morning. And I thank God for that. Jeremiah, he was talking about it. And he wept day and night when he wrote these passages. And sometimes in our lives we uh, see days that we can do nothing but cry. There's been a few times I preached here a couple months ago about uh, being heartbroken, having your heart broken. And that we all sooner or later go through some times in our lives it just seems like you're wounded in spirit and you're broken. And it seemed like even uh, if you cry physically, maybe if you don't cry outwardly, at least your heart's broken and you cry inside. I have seen folks before that cried and wept so much that they just all cried out. And they couldn't even cry anymore. Their tears seemed like just dried up. And, uh, brother, that's a, that's a hard place to be. You know, Jeremiah was talking about that. And uh, he was talking about uh, God being faithful. And he's talking about his compassion and His mercy and all that stuff. They talked about God's faithfulness. He said, great is thy faithfulness. Amen. Well, I'm so glad this morning that God's faithful, ain't you? Uh, you, know, you know, we're living a day and time now. It's worse than it's ever been. Right. It's worse than it's ever been about people being unfaithful. People won't stick to the stuff about anything anymore. People don't stick with what they believe. They won't stick with the... Uh, they won't stay with their marriages. People bail out on their marriages. And people drop out and quit this and quit that. Nobody sticks with anything. Don't seem like anymore. And uh, But I want to tell you, thank God, God still is faithful. Brother, he, God's still God. Me and Brother Billy back here was talking before church how different it is uh, from the uh, time he got into ministry back uh, back before I did. And I, I started in, 19, in the late 70s. And, brother, things are different now. But I'll tell you one thing I've noticed about this thing. And I've been preaching for 32 years. One thing, and I, I've come to the conclusion that God ain't changed nary a bit, brother. He's just as real and right and true as He was back then. You know, when I started preaching, I was 20 years old, and I got started, and I took off at it. And God, I mean, God burdened my heart to preach, and I, I ran from it for years. I finally, I finally surrendered to preach, and I said, I'm going to give it everything. 
everything I got. I'm gonna give God my life and go where He says go and try to do what He says do. And brother, I'll tell you what I've experienced uh, in these past 32 years. And brother, if I know anything, I know this this morning that God is faithful. I know you're probably listening to me this morning. You say, preacher, you don't know what's been done to me. You don't know how dirty I've been treated. So what? I have to. That ain't no big deal. Everybody has. Hey, think about this. Think about the only person that ever lived. He was born perfect and stayed perfect and never had a flaw. And he was thrown to a pack of wild dogs seemingly and they crucified him and murdered him for you. Oh, brother, I'll tell you what you talk about being done wrong. The Bible said, he said, I was wounded in a house of my friends. Oh, but God, listen through it all, brother. God's been faithful. And God is faithful. And God will continue to be faithful. I'll give you a few things this morning. I'll let you go. Might let you go early this morning unless you hoot and holler a little bit. Get me stirred up. Amen. But number one, I want to say this. God is faithful to forgive. Amen. God is faithful. I want you to open your Bibles to 1 John chapter 1. We've quoted it 10 million times. But let's read that famous passage real quick. 1 John chapter number 1. 1 John chapter number 1. You know what verse I'm going for, don't you? Verse 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. I want to tell you something, brother. God is faithful to forgive us of our sins. God is faithful to forgive. I'm so glad He is. Listen, I've been saved a long time. Some of y'all have been saved longer than I have. And God still forgives me today, just like He did back then. God is still real, brother, and He's still faithful. Brother, I know how it is. Sometimes you come to the altar and you pray and cry and you get back up from the altar and you still got that guilt. Could I tell you something this morning? By the authority of God's Word, the Bible said God is faithful to forgive you. I remember that night I got saved. Y'all bear with me. I know some of you come here all the time and heard this. I remember that night I got saved, Brother Sam. I ain't got over it yet. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was a reprobate, wicked, vile, ungodly, and filthy as I could be living in sin. Oh, brother, I ain't proud of it. I hate these kids even know what kind of man I used to be or a punk I used to be. Brother, listen, I, I drunk enough alcohol to float an a aircraft carrier, and I smoked enough dope to sink one probably. Oh, but Brother, that night I got down to pray. I want to tell you something. I did not need religion. I didn't even need mom and daddy. I didn't listen. I I didn't need to memorize scripture. I didn't even need the Romans road. I tell you what, I did need, brother. I was a broken shell of a young man at 20 years old. I fell down on my knees just like I mean, but my life was in pieces. I tell you what, I needed that night. I needed forgiveness, brother. Oh, thank God, the Bible said we have redemption. Through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. I know why some people won't get saved. They think their sins are so big and so bad and so dark and so black. And by the way, they are black. Amen. I'll tell you one thing, brother. Your sin, it is black and it is ugly. Oh, could I tell you this morning, on the authority of God's Word, that's what Jesus died for. That's what his blood was shed for, for your sins. I'm afraid people come to church and look at us and we're dressed up and cleaned up. Some of us clean up pretty good. Some of us still look pretty bad. I mean, you should have seen me before I got saved. But I want to tell you something, brother. I think sometimes they get a misconception and think, I can't live it. I can't be like y'all. But I want to tell you, Jesus Christ died to save those that are guilty and to save those uh, that needed forgiveness. Oh, that night I needed God to touch my heart. I needed that guilt gone. And brother God, he's faithful to do. I found out that night that my daddy had been preaching for years and years and years. And it was just exactly like he said it was. It was exactly. Exactly like the Bible said it was going to be. And I know how it is after you get saved. Certain sins will haunt you and plague you. And the devil will tell you that God's tired of forgiving you. Amen. I tell you what we need to do this morning. We just need to accept God at His Word. I mean, brother, if he said he's faithful, you say, but preacher, I keep doing the same sin, and I keep going back to the altar, and I keep praying, and I keep doing it, and I keep going back. Listen, let me tell you something. The Bible said if we confess our sins, he is faithful, brother. And listen, it don't matter if you really mean in your heart, if you come to God and say, God, you know my heart right now. I don't ever want to do that again. If 
if you really meant it from the depths of your heart, God will forgive you. I don't care if you committed that sin 10,000 times. He's faithful. We need to get that. If you'll ever grasp that great truth. You say, preacher, how do you have joy? And how do you live the Christian life? That's one of the secrets right there. And it really ain't no big secret. If you'll ever get that through your skull and down in your heart, that when you see it, if you'll just ask him, brother, he's more than willing to forgive you. He's more than happy. Amen. To wipe the slate clean and give you another shot at it. Amen. Our problem is we think we've got to feel bad for a certain length of time. Well, I can't repent right now. I hadn't suffered enough. No, it don't work that way. You don't have to do the suffering. That's why the dying Lamb of God, why He suffered, why He was bruised and battered, had His blood run out of His body. He did it for your fornication, your adultery, your gambling, your dope smoking, pill popping, getting drunk, lying, gossiping. Yeah, gossip is in too, bless God Almighty. Some people think adultery and drunkenness is the only sin they are. Some of you need to like your big long 40 foot tongue up here on this altar. So we'll chop the other 10 feet off. Oh, it got quiet right there. That's the only time a gossip is quiet when a preacher's nailing their stinking hide to the wall. But I want to tell you what, brother. You're sitting here thinking, preacher, I've got the awfulest burden on me. Listen, why don't you chunk it? Get rid of it. Listen, I've been trying to tell you it's so simple. Oh, it's so easy. Listen, can I tell you something this morning? Any person in this building this morning can walk out that door right back there as fresh and clean as a brand new baby that just come out of its mother's womb. The only reason you don't have it is you just simply will not believe what God says. That book said he's faithful. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, but that's for y'all. You don't know what a dirty bunch of stinking sinners we are. We ain't that great, so don't get, don't put us on the pedestal. Amen. He's faithful to forgive. When you sing, the devil talks to you. When you read your Bible, the devil talks to you. As soon as you get up from the altar sometime, you ain't even made it back to your seat, and you start thinking about that sin that you did yesterday, last night, last week, or whatever that is in your life. Listen, I'm trying to tell you this morning, he will make you snow white. If you'll come up here and say, Lord, you know I've been doing this, and God, I don't really don't want to do it, and I hope I never do again. Will you please forgive me? He'll say, absolutely, I sure will. Oh, that's the beauty of forgiveness. Brother, it ain't about you making amends. You cannot, you cannot go pay for your sins because the wages of sin is death. See, the Catholics think you can do penance and you do enough works and you do enough of this and you suffer enough and punish yourself enough, but it don't work that way because your righteousness is its filthy rags. Well, preacher, what if he gets tired of forgiving me? If that's the case, we've got to throw every bit of the Bible out because that one verse said he's faithful. You say it don't make sense. It don't make sense that I keep doing it and I keep sinning and I keep sinning and I keep asking Him. It don't make sense that God will not just finally eventually cut me off. Maybe it don't make sense to our human mind, but I'm telling you right here in the Bible, it said He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. Just confess it and just believe it and skip out the back door like a, like a kid skipping through daisies out in the field on a sunshiny day. Amen. It's that simple. You say, preacher, it can't be that simple. That's why people go through life miserable, and that's why Christians won't get the victory. They won't believe what God said. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. When you got saved, that's all you clung to was the fact that God would forgive you. I've had people tell me, preacher, you just don't know what I've done. It don't matter. It don't matter what you've done. You're not forgiven based on the degree of sin that you committed. Zacchaeus was up a tree and God forgave him. The woman at the well had a checkered past. She had been married and divorced five times and was shacking up with somebody and he saved her. Amen. Amen. Paul was a man. Saul of Tarsus was arresting Christians and having persecuted and God saved him. The thief on the cross was breathing his last breath and God saved him as he hung there dying. Amen. You probably ain't near as bad as none of them. What your problem is is you've listened to the devil too long. You just need to confess it and get up from the altar and just, glory to God, hallelujah, enjoy the fact of what God said in His Word. He's faithful to forgive. Number two, God is faithful to deliver. Let's look at another verse of Scripture. I don't normally have you uh, jumping around like this, but I'm just going to read one verse of Scripture to you right here. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 
I preached on this not long ago, and you know what verse it is. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. There's no temptation that's come your way that's different from what anybody else has had. If you're sitting there saying, preacher, you just don't know, you don't know, I used to be a drug dealer, I've sold LSD to people and they've overdosed and died. Other people's done that too. You ain't the first. Yeah. Amen? Amen? The next part of that verse said, but God is faithful. And he said, he's faithful who will not suffer you, you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. God is faithful to deliver you from the snare of the fowler. God's able and God's faithful. He'll deliver you. The Bible said, no matter what temptation comes your way, no matter how bad it gets, there's always going to be a door open somewhere for you to get out of it. Yeah. There ain't no temptation going to come. I've heard people say, well, they just what." I just couldn't, I just, wasn't no way out. Yes, there was. I've heard, I've heard of a lot of preachers and a lot of men that have, you know, been unfaithful to their wives or committed adultery. Preacher, it just came on me, it just happened, there just wasn't no escape. There was. You just didn't take it. I was talking to a man one time and he said, he said, preacher, I know what I'm doing is wrong, but I can't stop. I said, wait a minute, brother. You can stop. You just won't. You're liking it. You're enjoying it, ain't you? And he dropped his head, yeah. I said, you can stop if you wanted to. Amen? You just don't want to. The Bible said he's faithful to deliver. I'm trying to tell you this morning, God always makes a door to escape. Our problem is we don't look for it, or when we see it, we turn our head the other way. Like that little boy kept going swimming down the river on the way home from school, and his mom was afraid he's going to drown, you know. And she kept whipping him. She said, boy, I said, if, I, if you go... You go swimming down there again, I'm going to wear you out. And she said, promise me you'll never go swimming like that again. He said, Mama, I promise, I promise I'll never. And so the next morning he went to school in his backpack. He put a pair of swim trunks just in case he's tempted. <laughs> That's what a lot of Christians are. Hey, just in case I'm tempted, Lord. Hey, brother, I'm trying to tell you, God made a way of escape, and God will make a way of escape because He is faithful. God's faithful. Think about this. Everybody in here testify and say, I remember the times God's been faithful and delivered me out of this and delivered me out of that and kept me from this and kept me from that. What about all the times He's delivered you from stuff that you don't even know about? Amen. You don't even know. You're like a worm laying out in the driveway and the car runs back and forth up the driveway and never runs over. That's the way we are. That's the way our life is. Well, the Bible said our life's like a vapor, like a blade of grass. We're here today and gone tomorrow. And, brother, any of us could get killed any time. Any of us could die. There ain't nothing keeping your heart beating except God. The life, uh, breath of God is where the uh, life dwells. And God is keeping us on this earth. Amen. I could tell you story after story, and you could do how God's delivered us. Amen. I'll tell you this, just popped in my head, been Ronnie a couple of years, it ain't been that long ago, a year and a half or so ago, we went up in the mountains, took a trailer and went up, went up in the mountains and got a car. And it was raining, it was up in Asheville, North Carolina, you know, up there in God's country, which was real pretty. It was rainy, drizzly, bad day, and we loaded that car up on that trailer, we borrowed it from another guy, and strapped it down, you know, chained it down, strapped it down, I mean, we had her strapped down, son. I mean, if we lose one, we're going to have to turn the whole thing over. And so we come down that mountain just getting it, you know, just having a good time. And we come all the way back, come home, come back through Savannah and drop that trailer off. Well, we was at the other fellow that I borrowed it from his church about three months later. He said, boy, God, he said, God sure is with you, preacher. I said, praise the Lord. I know what he meant. He said, I mean, God's watching out for you. I said, amen, brother. He's good. He said, no. He said, I mean, God's really watching. I said, what do you mean? He said, you brought that trailer back. The next day, I put a backhoe on it, went down the road three miles, and the wheel came off. God's watching this, brother. Coming down that mountain. Have you ever come down Asheville Mountain on the interstate? I mean, it's like a snake, son, in the rain. Can you imagine? I mean, that's just one of many, 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 many instances that God has delivered me. And He's done the same for you. God is faithful about delivering His kids. You know what I thought about last night? I mean, I was, I was finishing up working on this message, and I thought about this. All the years that I've been preaching, and all the miles that we've traveled on the road, I could not tell you how many miles we've traveled. It's up, it's over 100, I promise. <laughs> when I took this church two years ago, we traveled 40,000 miles back and forth till we moved here. That's the truth. We figured it out one day. Ronnie and Travis figured it up. 40,000 miles. 
just back and forth. Now think about it. Over the years, all those years of traveling, and there was a few years there when I was in evangelism, that's all we did. Stayed up, lived on the road, lived out of a suitcase. All those times, not one time did we ever get hurt. I can't really recall any time we ever lost anything or misplaced anything. Ain't that crazy? I'm not talking about your car keys. I do that every day. That's normal. I lose them before I get out of here today, probably. I lock myself out of the house or something. But I'm just saying, brother God is faithful to deliver. And even though sometimes it's faith that you don't even realize, God's being faithful by delivering you Amen. from destruction and trouble. Amen. Amen. God's good. I'm going to say last of all, God is faithful to fulfill His Word. Amen. God's faithful to do exactly what He said He'd do. Amen. Some things in this book right here, they are hard to understand. I don't see that's why they keep trying to rewrite it and make it to where you can understand it. But but this is the truth. Their problem is the parts they do understand. That's why they're messing with it. This book, there's nothing wrong with the King James Bible, it don't have any mistakes in it. But what they do is they try to rewrite it and take out the part that offends them. They take out the word sodomite and adultery and stuff like that, and they take that out. But what I'm trying to tell you is this God's faithful to fulfill his word. What God said he would do, he will do. The Word of God is not bound. Every day you look on the TV and see it in the news. Haven't you noticed on the news lately, all this unrest through the Middle East, it just keeps spreading. I mean, riots in the street and people shooting their own folks. And now we're getting all involved in all that stuff. Earthquakes and tsunamis and murder and blood and guts and killing and raping and all that stuff, brother. I tell you, don't you realize that it's unfolding right before our very eyes? But we knew it was going to happen. God said that in the last days, perilous times will come. God said this 2,000 years ago. He said toward the end, it's going to get dangerous. It's going to get dangerous. How many of you know that it's dangerous for you to walk out your front door? How many of you know it's dangerous to let your kids around certain people? How many of you know that you don't even know who you're letting your kids around? You've got to be careful, brother. But he's able to fulfill his word. Here's what I want to tell you this morning. He's faithful about fulfilling His Word. He promised that if you'll come to Him, He'll save you. Just forget about all, everything else. Just forget about religion and good works. And the man told me the other day, he said, well, every time I come out my door in the mornings, my, my object in life is to do good. I said, that's fine, but that ain't going to save you. That ain't going to get you to heaven. People really think that. I'm a good person. Big deal. That ain't going to get you to heaven. But God will save you. And secondly, I want you to understand that if you're saved and you've got problems and you've got trouble, He's faithful to fulfill His Word into giving you peace and giving you joy. And He's faithful in His Word when He said, this life's going to pass. We're all just passing through. One of these days we're going to leave. And the only thing that's going to matter is what we did for Him. I'd hate to leave this world lost because I was noticing all the hypocrites in the church and everything that's wrong with the church and not go to church and die lost. He's faithful. And the last thing I want to say about him fulfilling his word is he said that he's coming back. I don't have to stay here. You say, preacher, we're all going to die. Well, we are, unless he comes back first. But even if we die, we're going to a better place than this. And if you don't know that in your heart this morning, if you don't know with a certainty, 100% surety, you say, preacher, I've been to the altar. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about if you left here, got in the car, and you got sick, and they took you to the doctor, and they said, sir, we, don't, oh, we can't explain it, but you've got such and such, such and you've got about 24 hours. You're, you're dying. You're, you're, you're going to die. You're going to be dead in maybe 48 hours to most. Are you ready? Are you really? Are you that ready? I'm not talking about going to church and being good as the rest of us. Forget that. I'm talking about if we walked out that door and some crazy gunman was standing And you know that stuff happens. There's a young preacher out in Texas last week got killed in his office. Some crazy guy came in and robbed him killed him. That's why I pack heat. If they kill me, but there's going to be three or four holes in their back as they're going out the door. But I'm just saying, don't, don't waste your life thinking... I'll get right later because later may never come. Let's all stand this morning. Heads bowed.